Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Eric Jenkins. I'm the account manager for Connecting Up in TechSoup New Zealand. Connecting Up is part of the Info Exchange Group and Info Exchange is a not-for-profit social enterprise that has delivered technology for social justice for over 25 years. With over 100 staff across Australia and New Zealand, we tackle the biggest social challenges through the smart and creative use of technology. Today, I would love to welcome you to the webinar, Everything You'll Need for a Seamless Transition to Remote Work, which will be presented by Yvette McInerney from LogMeIn and Joel McInnes from Flex Career careers. We'll start with just a little bit of short housekeeping here. All the lines are going to be muted, so if you have any technical issues, please type that into the questions box on your webinar panel, and I'll do my best to help troubleshoot that. If you have any questions during the session, please also type that into the questions box, and we'll answer them in the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. Please note that your comments and questions will not appear to the entire group, though they will just appear to me. If you're on a Wi-Fi connection and have multiple programs open, that can sometimes affect the quality of the audio and video of the webinar. So if possible, just close down those other programs to help you have the best experience possible. Do note this webinar is also being recorded and a link to the recording and the slides will be sent out later this week. Before we'd like to start, I'd also like to remind you there will be a couple of polls during this webinar very shortly, so please pay attention and answer those when those come up. Uh, there will also be a survey at the end of the webinar, so we would really appreciate it if you could take a few minutes to provide us with any feedback on how it all goes. Otherwise, that's it for me for now. So over to you guys. Let's rock and let's do this. Thanks so much. Um, well, Thanks, it's great Eric. to be here today. Um, really looking forward to having a chat to you about remote working and, and what it means. Um, my name's Yvette Bakanini. I head up the Unified Communications and Collaboration Division of Log Me In. Um, I've got with me today, Joel McGuinness, who's the co-founder of Flex Careers. So we're gonna have a little bit of a chat about the transition um, through the cycle of remote working, where we've come from over the last few weeks. Um, Joel's put some polls together, so I might hand over to Joel and we'll start to talk about um, and, and get into some, some commentary around how life is as a remote worker. Yeah, thanks Yvette. It's great to be here with everyone. Thanks to log me in. Uh, thanks to Info Exchange as well. Um, yeah, really good to, to be able to to talk through what is um, the topic that everyone is going through. So at the moment, what we'd really love to do um, is we just work out how you are finding your current work from home working situation, um, because obviously there's been quite a bit of change. So if you can just score yourself out of five, essentially, um, how are you coping really? Um, one is a I'm not coping very well and I think five is a I'm doing great. So if we can just have, um, just start it out with a few data points just to find out um, how everyone's going. Uh, we'll just give this a few more seconds to give everyone a chance to, to, um, to rate their, their experience, I suppose, their lived ex current lived experience of what's going on because as, we're, as we'll see, um, yeah, things are certainly changing in this space. So have we got any data um, coming through yet? We have got a bit. So we've got 72% have voted, 74 now. So we've got 50% of respondents have scored themselves three out of five, 36% four out of five, and 14% five out of five. Okay, perfect. All right, so it sounds like everyone's doing okay to, um, to actually doing reasonably well. Um, so what we want to also do is really put a um, compare what was the current experience to what you would have been going through before COVID-19 really hit. Everyone was sent home. Well, many people were sent home. Um, and so if you can just also rate yourself, how you how, if you were a three, were you was was it was your data different? Was your score different? Do you think three weeks ago, just before everyone got sent home? That's what we'd really like to find out um, because I'm just quite keen to see if there's any change in, the, in folks' experience, really how they're going. So just give it another 10 seconds or so before we start um, having a look at some of the data. All right, Eric, do we have any data coming through? All right, we do. So we've got 6% have said it was 1, 12% have rated themselves a 2, 41% a 3, 24% a 4, and 18% a 5. Yeah. So we can certainly see um, some of the change. Now, we asked uh, for Flex Careers, we asked our community um, uh, actually just last night, or yesterday afternoon, sorry, 
Um, and so for the, it's actually some really interesting data that we've got um, that kind of reflects some of that as well. So what we've got is we asked essentially the same questions, one about how I break my work life now, um, one that I rated my work life three weeks ago. Um, and we're seeing actually a quite a bit of deterioration in people's, how they rate their work life and also how they rate them, their mental wellness. So uh, it looks like about a 19% uh, reduction in how you rate yourself uh, in terms of your, um, your work life balance or work life actually, just how you, how you see work life and a similar 17% reduction in mental wellbeing. So that's actually some of the, one of the interesting findings that we're starting to see. Um, Yvette, how are you finding your team in terms of, I suppose, their mental wellness, um, their feeling about their roles, and also, I suppose, that then leads through to their productivity? Yeah, look, I lead um, a team of 18 salespeople. So, as you can imagine, there's quite a few outgoing type of personalities. They're used to being face-to-face. -face, they're used to being in front of people. They're used to talking and having that buzz around them. So it's been a big um, shift for the team. I think um, we've been very lucky in terms of the fact that the technology that we sell is very much needed at the moment. So they're in a really good position where they're being kept very busy from a work perspective. But that also then leads to the mental health side where they're not really putting some boundaries around you know, shutting off their systems at six o'clock and going and, and spending time with family and having that downtime to be refreshed for the next day. So I am finding some of the team are now getting a to that point of a little bit burnt out. You know, we're, we're kind of asking people, you know, to just take a day off here and there just to refresh and, and reset the expectations because you can see, you know, it was all sort of, you know, a bit of fun at the beginning and now it's like, oh my God, I'm so busy and I feel like I'm working 24 hours a day and there's no break. And you've got all the distractions like, you know, I've got a couple of kids. Um, they can't, you know, help to self-school themselves, so to speak. They're in primary school. Uh, you've got other people that have got toddlers. You've got other people who don't have children, but they live on their own. So it's that whole, they're not having any human connection. So, so there's a lot of things that are coming into play in terms of remote working that are affecting people's ability to be effective. Yeah. No, that's, that's really what I think what, we're, what everyone is seeing. We're, we are going through a journey um, and there are, I think there are quite a few, there are a few different phases that we put together. We just go across to the next slide. So this is some of the work that we're doing uh, with advising, customer, advising companies and how, uh, how best, I suppose, manage their business, but not so much their business, really on the people side of things. Because uh, I know that what Vet does is very much on the technology side. Uh, the enabler piece, um, but when it drills, when you, what we uh, are, are speaking to a lot of folks about is the people side of the business. And so I reckon there are actually four different phases to this whole thing. So phase one, um, we're coming to towards the end of that now. Um, phase one is all about we're sending everyone home. So if you think about that as the, the, the response, the tactical piece, um, the, almost the knee-jerk reaction, um, and it's not as if we had a choice, anyone had a choice, that when um, you need to prioritise people's health, um, it's very much the right thing to do, um, but it goes against sort of, I suppose, best practice change management. If you think about it that way, I mean, you think what change management is, we plan, we have a phased approach, we send tests, test and learn, all of that kind of stuff. We didn't get any of that chance. No, so no one had that. So we're sort of um, playing it by year. So if you think about phase one um, as the first three weeks of, okay, let's spin this up and very much as part of a, um, a continuity piece. Uh, can we just go to phase two then? Um, and phase two is really where we're starting to see now. Uh, phase two is this is becoming unsustainable. It's sort of, sort of the stuff that Yvette was talking about just then. Um, our people aren't coping. Um, so this is, I suppose, the optimization piece. Uh, we really need to work out what's going on, speak to our people, do the whole test and learn thing, um, test, learn, and then and then course correct, potentially. Um, I suppose that's a generous way of putting it. The less generous way to talk about it would be, uh, we're really playing catch up. Um, so it's things like, now people now need to start thinking about the um, the mental 
impact on their people. And that's some of the data that we've been seeing again. So I say I spoke about that 17% reduction in um, my feeling about workload, my work, work life, sorry, and 19% reduction in people's mental health. It's just in the last three weeks. And that's really where we're starting to think about it. Then the next phase, I reckon, happens in after week six. And it's quite interesting because everyone, if you think about it, got sent home on this more or less the same day. Um, across the entire economy. And so we've almost got uh, a, a very scientific experiment that we can be running here um, to see how the crowd responds to this, this whole um, thing. So if you think about phase three is our people will have different expectations on us when this is all over. So that's what, what HR are thinking about, will be thinking about. That's what our leaders will be thinking about. And if you take a leaf out of the book of disaster recovery, the way that they think about it is their, their phrase is build for better. And so what we essentially need to do, it's a strategic piece. Um, once we can, uh, once we've worked out how to make this sustainable for the next sort of two, three months, whatever, uh, then we start thinking strategically. And what, what we'll, we are going to see is how can we take the lessons we've learnt from um, and the lessons we've learned from this, this whole phase or this whole sort of uh, working from home experiment, we take those lessons and then we are going to see how we might choose the best pieces of those for our own version of the future work because that's where it really gets interesting is, is how what we're learning here, um, the skills we're taking and the, the new business practices we're, we're employing, how do they feed into everyone's future of work? Because, uh, of course, future of work itself is a very uh, personal uh, experience. It's a very personal choice that each individual uh, individual company will make. Uh, and then the final phase is really as, as this rebuild starts, uh, the whole build for better thing, is people who are going to realise that, oh, no, we, re we actually really need to, to staff up because, of course, back into phase one, uh, when this whole thing happened and what we're seeing right now uh, through our career switch uh, channels um, is people are asking for a lot of like uh, businesses have been laying a lot, a lot of staff and we've seen that I mean some of the um, the surveys that I've seen said 10% uh, of the, the workforce got laid off um, over the, the past three weeks which is just just sort of tragic um, but hopefully uh, with the uh, with what we're seeing from the government just today of, of potentially opening up a stage of reopening of the economy, all of those folks can find, can find um, employment again. So I think that's when it really starts, uh, starts uh, feeding through into the, the future of the future of work. Um, and so that's kind of where we see it. Um, Yvette, do you want to have a look at this? How does technology play a role in what we're talking about here? Yeah, look, I think technology obviously plays a huge role. Um, we're sending everyone home means we've got to make sure that people have got the tools to be able to do their job from home. So, you know, it's making sure they've got, you know, from their own home perspective, they've got internet access. Have they got the capability of making phone calls? Can they do email? Can they do what they normally do in that phase? And there's lots of different technologies, which I can talk about a little bit later that that build into that phase. I think. Um, Phase two, that becoming unsustainable is where you need to get a little bit creative in terms of how we communicate with each other, um, bring a little bit of fun into it to keep people's um, spirits high. Um, and you can do a little bit of that, obviously, with technology as well. Um, and the different expectations, I completely agree with that, is if you've been predominantly a business where everybody's worked in the office and now suddenly everybody's working from home, there will definitely be an expectation from some of the staff that will come back into the workforce or when you move back into the office and say, well, hang on, you know, it worked fine. Why can't I work from home two days a week and things like that? So definitely see that expectation will, will move, especially as we make sure that everybody is set up correctly. And again, you know, unfortunately, you're correct. A lot of people have um, lost their jobs or their jobs have been put on hiatus. So um, there will be a lot of recruiting. There'll be a lot of people that will also look at 
how have they been treated by their company during this period and have they been given all the tools they need to be able to work effectively and efficiently so I think that we'll also see a bit of a shift of people moving roles as well because they may not be comfortable with the way their company has handled this whole process. Yeah no that's right and in terms of you as a leader um, and as, a, as the, the steward of your team sort of um, how are you handling the change, particularly this change we're starting to see now, how are you really looking after your team and making sure that they are, um, or use the, the term burnout, how are we sort of looking at that piece? Yeah, I mean, that's a difficult one. I mean, I've even felt it myself. So I know exactly, well, I don't know exactly how people are feeling, but I assume if I'm feeling a little bit of that, then a lot of my team are. So, you know, things like me, I'm finding it really difficult because I've got primary age school children and it's not school holidays yet and that we're expecting to homeschool them while we work full time that's been a real strain um got other people on the team who i said before like live on their own so you know just making sure they're getting that contact so um i've done a few things with the team we do a huddle nearly every morning just for 15 minutes doesn't necessarily you know on some of them we'll talk about specific work things and what we need to do but on other times it's literally how are you what did you do over the weekend or you know what did you do last night so it's more on a personal basis um, definitely reaching out to those that are either you know the more outgoing or the ones that are living by themselves to make sure they're okay um, I actually just did this morning um, just sent them all an Uber Eats voucher just for something different to you know break it up say thank you for all your hard work um, and then as I said you? earlier yeah. Um, yeah. So I just thought, you know, that they've worked really hard over the last, you know, three weeks at home and um, we've just finished off a quarter, which was, which was very successful. So it was a bit of a thank you. Um, but also what we've done as a company as a whole from our CEO down has basically said, you know, take a day. If you need a mental health day, just take a day off. Don't put leave in, just take the day, rest yourself and, and be fresh for the next the next phase basically. Yep. Should we go on the next slides? Um, I think this is over to you at the moment, is it? It sure is. Um, so, you know, if we talk about those phases and some of the things and the technology that we can use to assist um, our teams to work. So, um, you know, I'll just run through very briefly each of the products that are going to assist. You know, we're, we're in a very lucky and unique situation that we can help people to continue to run their businesses and to be able to move their business model into a mode that is going to help them to continue to transact so you know we feel very privileged actually to be in that position that we can help people um, and that is actually helping my team to feel good about themselves as well as they're actually helping people so you know one of our flagship products is the go to meeting product you may have heard of it um, it's been around for a very long time and it is your traditional video conferencing solution um, so where people need to meet obviously in this particular scenario we don't want to just do phone calls we want to see people we want to see how their reactions and all that sort of stuff so video conferencing has obviously become astronomically popular right now um, and we used to go to meetings that were video conferences and people used to keep their webcams off. Now everybody's got them on. So it's really important. So our go to meeting product, you know, you can have up to 250 users on that. You can have up to 25 webcams running. Um, but, you know, I also use it for my one on one conversations with each of my team members as well. So it's a really useful tool. It's really easy to use. People don't need to download anything if you're inviting them to a meeting. It can be you know, just used from a from a web browser. So um, there's a lot of no idiosyncrasies around how people need to use it as well. So, you know, and you can use it on a desktop, an iPad, a mobile phone, whatever you need. Um, so it's quite versatile in that regard. Um, the next product, which I think is really useful, and I think we're, we're seeing a really big shift right now in people's mentality around how they're communicating by voice to their customers. Um, and we bring in the GoTo Connect product around that. And that is very much, obviously, nobody's in an office and a lot of people have on-premise PABX solutions or telephony systems that they can't use right now because they're sitting in an office and the telephone systems are there. So this is, um, this is basically a unified communications offering in the cloud um, where you can basically use soft phone off your laptop. You can use a mobile device 
and it is basically all your telephony, including all your calls, uh, the cost of your calls. It's very simple. Uh, it's got all the features of a normal PBX system. Um, and the beautiful thing about GoToConnect is it actually includes the GoToMeeting product. So you get your voice and your video collaboration product in one. Um, it's a simple as a user, uh, single user uh, cost per user per month. Um, and it's really simple. We have a project team that roll it out uh, from an IT perspective very easily managed, really easy, easy dial plan. So it's a really simple, quick, quick uh, product to get up and running and can have people connected and, and you know, taking calls, especially if you've got uh, a lot of inbound calls or people are making a lot of outbound calls. I'm sure people don't want uh, their staff to be running up massive mobile phone bills, uh, you know, while they're sitting at home. So, you know, it's a really great product. And we've, we've just seen a shift probably in the last week now that people have been home for a few weeks that the companies are going, how are we gonna manage this? We we don't know how many calls people are making. We don't know what they're doing. We need to be able to control that. And so this product has now become front of mind for a lot of people in terms of their business continuity. Um, the third product is our GoToWebinar product. You've probably heard a little bit about this. We're actually using it today to be able to bring this, uh, this webinar to you. Uh, so it is, um, it's great for if you've got, you know, a company where you want to get out to all of your staff and have a conversation. If you are a company that likes to talk to your, um, you know, all your customers or you want to run training sessions or you want to deliver a message around, I know there's quite a lot of not-for-profits on here. So if you, you know, want to talk to people who you would normally be, you know, having events with, this is the great product where you can, you know, get out to up to 3,000 people on this. You can have a registration. You can know who's turned up. We can actually know who is paying attention. Um, and so we can, you know, you can run it for training programs and things like that. So it's a really, really uh, robust system that's been around for a long time and we, you know, use it regularly. It's, it's a really good tool with a lot of statistics that you can pull out of it as well. Um, getting to more the IT side of what people need in this particular environment, and that is things like, you know, you've obviously got everybody working from home, um, and our Rescue Assist product is really good in terms of support. So you've got, uh, you know, 25 people working at home, and none of them are very computer literate. You need somebody from your IT team to be able to access what they're doing, and if they're having problems with downloading applications or one of their applications isn't working or there's something wrong with their computer, then at least the IT person can get access without physically having to go anywhere. Uh, you can remote access into these, uh, into the um, your staff's uh, technology and make sure that we can troubleshoot those issues really quickly. So that's been, you know, our own, obviously we, we use all of these products internally ourselves, but you know, I had an issue yesterday with one of my things and and our IT support remote remote in and fixed my uh, application issue, you know, within five minutes. So it's been really good to, you know, people not thinking they have to become experts in the technology that they're now running at home. Um, then in terms of, you know, we've got a lot of, if you think of a lot of um, legacy type environments, big old contact centres that have all their technology sitting in a facility uh, they can't transition it all out to laptops and, and personal devices. Um, what we have with um, go to my PC and central is basically it's remote access from any device into those computers that are still sitting in the office. So um, without having to replicate everything outside of the environment, you know, there's been able to access those desktops um, from outside of the facility. So that's been really useful, especially in a lot of big government departments where they're um, you know, they haven't made that transition to uh, more aggregated and remote type working. So we're able to, to also help those customers get access to all of that technology that is, is currently sitting on premise. Um, and I think the last thing and probably the most important thing that people need to think about right now with everybody from working from home is your security um, aspect and protecting your credentials. Um, you would have seen a lot of press lately around um, you know, there's a lot more phishing attacks and uh, people trying to hack into all sorts of applications because people are sitting at home and you get like your uni students that are a little bit bored and they think they're a little bit of an IT guru and they're trying to attack things. So LastPass um, is, pro is, you know, one of our flagship products and it's very much around protecting credentials. Um, so password 
um, you know, a single uh, platform that basically will hold all of the passwords. The only password you ever have to remember is your last pass password. And it'll make sure that it's, you know, it's single sign on in terms of how you get onto all your activities and all your applications, but it's also making sure that you've got really long, lengthy, um, very um, structured passwords that people just can't hack into. Because that's one of the things that we are finding is people, uh, you know, take when they go home, they tend to have only, you know, a handful of passwords that they have to keep remembering. So they keep using them. And then what happens is you're taking them into the work environment and then that leaves, uh, you know, companies open to attack in terms of, people being able to hack into those passwords. So, you know, they're probably the, the six products that we're seeing a lot of activity on at the moment that we can really help people in terms of how they um, help themselves in this remote environment. And, um, you know, we can absolutely work with anybody who, you know, has some questions around any of these products that may be able to help them to, to move to uh, remote working smoothly. If we can go to uh, the next slide, Jess. Um, so our CEO, Bill Wagner, um, you know, he's very passionate about helping people in the current environment. As I said earlier, we feel that it's um, very much our priority that we put our best foot forward and, and you know, make this transition for our customers, uh, you know, easy. And so we've put together a bit of a program um, this is a quote from him, which I'm sure you can read as I'm talking away. Um, but what we've done is we've put together what we're calling our emergency remote worker kit. And that is basically um, those technologies that I talked about, um, predominantly the ones where you're connecting with people. So go to meeting, go to webinar, uh, my, go to my CP and my PC and Central and rescue. We are basically put together an emergency remote worker kit for people in the healthcare industry in the education space, not-for-profit and government, because we feel like that is the essential workers at this point in time in the, in the, you know, in this environment that we find ourselves in. So we're basically giving this product to uh, those four verticals for free for 90 days. Um, no strings attached. There's no signing any documentation or anything like that. It's very much, we need, we want to be there to help. So it's out in the market for 90 days. Um, hopefully by then the pandemic is is uh, finished and people can move on to life as it was, which I'm not sure it will ever be the same. But um, but also you know gives us that you know the ability to help people. Um, we've got the technology we want to help, so um, that's the what we're offering. And then obviously we've got people outside of those verticals where you know we can help them with all those products, and you know the, the pricing is not hugely significant. So. But we feel like those essential workers in, in those verticals are the ones that we feel like we really need to be on the front foot and help as much as possible during this time. So there you so, go, guys. Um, we need to go and sign yeah. up with, with the vet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, there's a lot of stuff on our website as well. I think you'll be given some information um, at the end of the webinar around uh, where you can find the information. Um, I th I'm happy to deliver out my contact details and obviously Joel's if you've got some questions around how to manage your people. Um, but that was pretty much it from us in terms of what we wanted to deliver to you. But I think we'll go uh, back and see what questions we've got and whether we can help to answer some of those. Thanks guys. So we have got a few questions here and for anyone else, now is the time to ask them. So please go ahead and ask more. Uh, we've got plenty of time here. So I'll hop into it. So the first question we've got, what are the key learnings or insights you've discovered from shifting to a remote workforce? I might jump into that one um, if it's all right. So the key learnings and the insights. So here's what I've, I've read many, many times and it says that COVID-19 changes everything. Well, I actually think that that's wrong, it's plainly wrong. What's happened, I reckon, is, is COVID-19 has accelerated everything. Um, that's all that this is. So we were always going to end up in a situation like we were at some stage. And by that, I mean um, the way that we work. Uh, so whether it's working remotely, whether it's using the cool tools that, that, um, that Yvette was talking about, whether it is that we need to learn how to I suppose, manage more in, in times of um, ambiguity and, and volatility. I mean, there's, there's the, the new phrase is VUCA, 
I think it stands for VUCA, stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Uh, that's exactly what we're getting now. But what COVID-19 has done, I suppose the insight that I, I take, is that it's just accelerated everything. So any change that was coming here, yes, it's the change has been violent and the change has been, and there's been a lot of tragedy going on uh, and there's no way of getting away from that. But then if you also look at towards the, um, getting back towards that build for better piece that I mentioned earlier on, um, I think what we've done is we've just got here at a, just a, a much faster and maybe a bumpier way, but we've just got to the same spot we would have been with the way that we work just a lot quicker. Yvette, what do you reckon? Yeah, look, I tend to agree. I think, um, you know, the changes have been absolutely accelerated and probably not at a pace that any of us would have liked it to happen. But I tend to agree, you know, we've been seeing it in pockets um, around different industries, but a lot of industries were lagging behind quite significantly. So I think it's absolutely accelerated it. As I said, not in the fashion we would have liked, but definitely has accelerated it. Excellent, thanks for that. We do. Uh, second question here. So what are some considerations that I might not be thinking about in regards to remote work? Uh, I might start this one off. I think the biggest one, and I touched on it right at the end of the presentation, and that is security and privacy. So uh, it's all well and good to set up all your, uh, you know, applications at home to communicate with family and um, obviously you're doing work and you're probably sometimes using the same devices for everything. Um, security at this point in time is really critical to make sure that we can make sure we are not giving out any credentials um, where we find ourselves in a situation where passwords are leaked or people are getting access to people's bank accounts and, uh, you know, company data. So I think that's one thing that we all go, we just want to get ourselves up and running and be able to communicate and we, we need to be able to work as we would in the office. But I think the security aspect is something that People are only now just starting to think about now that they're actually in that transition, they're starting to see uh, a couple of things happening and security seems to be the last thing where we probably should have been thinking about that first. But if you've and got some what, things to add around that as yeah, well. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think the, the things that we're seeing um, on the people side, and again, I, I'm not uh, in touch with uh, the technology side, uh, that's the event's piece. But really what we're seeing, there's three, there's three pieces you really need to focus on with your people. So the first one is about wellness, making sure that they are okay uh, from a mental perspective, uh, from a mental wellness, well-being, health, are you going for a run every day, whatever it was that, 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 it, that works for you. That's the first thing. Um, and so we have, we're asked, being asked a lot to help um, businesses around that, just training them and giving them um, very tangible uh, to do's, to very tangible tricks. The second piece is leadership. Um, so leaders, it, what we're doing by remote working uh, is we're taking away some of the tools that leaders have always used to lead their team. So the shoulder check, for example, I, can, I leaders right now have no visibility on inputs. Uh, you can't see what people are doing. You can only see the outcomes. Uh, and so the leadership piece, a big piece of that, is making sure that that teams, that the leaders are okay uh, managing this ambiguity and focusing on outcomes rather than inputs. Uh, and the third one is the strategy piece. Um, this will be over at some stage. And so how are you going to build for better? Or build back better, I think is the phrase. So that's what I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. That's Thanks for that. Point. Cool. So we've got some more questions that have come in. So. We have got someone following up now. I think this one probably better handled offline. Uh, someone just wanted to follow up on whether or not they haven't had a response yet from the emergency remote work kit. So if you could flick through your details to events at connectingup.org, uh, we'll make sure that we can follow up with the blog me and team as well so you can get what you need. Now, the next question we've got actually is more of a product related question here. So someone's asking, they've been trying a few different products here and at the moment, Microsoft Teams is a big name that's been going around, as has Zoom for things like web conferencing and team collaboration tools. So the question they're asking really is, what's the differentiating factor for the log me in, especially the GoToMeeting products here? Sure, um, I think if you talk um, the Microsoft Teams play, it's very much built for internal use. We actually integrate really seamlessly with Microsoft Teams. 
Um, it's really good if you're just communicating within a team and you're not doing anything external. Um, it's really good for your chat piece, um, but the quality and I suppose all the features that you get uh, around a video meeting with GoToMeeting is somewhat more enhanced. Um, on the Zoom side, um, uh, what you want to look at there is just around the privacy and security piece. Um, with GoToMeeting, what we have is the ability to obviously do unique meetings each time. If, if you are very security conscious, we can add passwords to that. Once people have joined the meeting, you can lock it, which means nobody else can get in. Uh, we have the ability, obviously, to screen share. Um, and you can, you can make the option of allowing other people to share stuff or not. So you can lock that right down and just have the presenter being able to share. Um, the other thing is you don't have to download anything if you're using GoToMeeting or you're sending that out to, to people to join a GoToMeeting. They can literally use their web browser. There's no need. We won't download anything by people doing that. They can literally join via a web browser and not have anything downloaded onto their device. Um, and we have really, really good, um, high, very good high scores in terms of the mobile app. If you look in uh, the Android or the Apple iOS ratings, um, we rate the highest on both of those mobile apps as well. Uh, but can I obviously, um, you know, if somebody wants some more details, we can send them through more um, technical and, uh, and some more information around the security pieces and the privacy as well. Excellent. Thanks for that. Now, it looks like that actually has come to the end of the questions here. Now, we have got quite a bit of time. Is there anything else that comes to mind for either of you, Joel or Yvette, in terms of any tips, tricks, any funny things that you've been doing to try and, I guess, cope personally or that you're finding have been useful to help you just work from home and just stay productive and stay disciplined while there are so many distractions? Yeah. yeah that's a good question. Here you go, Yvette. Um, I think one of the things is you need some structure. So you can literally roll out of bed in your pajamas and open up your laptop and start working. So I think you need to have a bit of structure. Obviously, if you've got family, that kind of helps you to make some structure because there's things that you need to do with them. I think you've got to keep some things light as well. This situation is quite serious. So, you know, we've been doing, I've been doing funny things with my team where, you know, they're coming to the meetings with masks on or we're doing happy hour at, you know, four o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, things like that, just to keep it light and keep it human and feel like there's, uh, you know, the interactions are a little bit more fluid. Um, what I've actually found with my team during this time is I actually think they've got closer, which is kind of weird considering that they're not actually together in the office where they used to spend quite a lot of time together. I think they're probably taking more time now to actually, you know, have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, they're seeing more of each other. They're actually seeing where people are living. Kids are jumping into the video frame. So people are seeing people's families and pets and all that sort of thing. So the human element is actually keeping things a little bit lighter, which I think is actually really nice in a situation where it's quite serious. Yeah, one of the cool things that I've seen one of our customers do um, is have a virtual lunchroom every day. So there's a recurring, I think it's, uh, yeah, there's a recurring um, video meeting every every lunchtime from 12.15 to 12.30. I think there are only two rules that they have. Um, the first rule is no talk about work. And the second one, of course, is no talk about the virus. Um, and otherwise, it's just a, let's sort of, uh, let's connect. I mean, essentially what you really need to do is to ensure that you still maintain those vir virtual water cooler moments. Um, I think that's really, really important because, of course, it's those water, water cooler moments that bring about the serendipitous water cooler moments that bring about new ideas, it brings about the innovation, it brings about the, um, uh, yeah, the, just the growth of, of the business. And so that's one of the really important learnings that we've had uh, in our business um, is just somehow force those, I mean, we can all, almost call them collisions in a positive, yeah. a very positive way. Um, so yeah, just somehow make, make a way to, um, to ensure that you still have those across the team. Awesome. Thank you yeah. both very much for that. Like I said, that is the end of the questions. I don't think we've had any more come through. Are there any last words from either of you here? Um, I think just, I would just say, that, look, you know, we're all in a unique situation. We've got to make the best of it. Uh, you've got to make it really, uh, you know, you've got to make your staff, I think, feel comfortable in this situation as well, is they're not really sure what 
your expectations are either um, because we're not, as Joel said, we're not in a situation where you can look over people's shoulders. So I think um, making it really clear about what your expectations are, touching base regularly and um, making light of the situation, I think is, is um, the best way to keep everybody sane. I just say, make sure you support your people. So you put, support your leaders to lead, support your employees in, I suppose, what are almost the, um, the rules of engagement around this thing because it's just a different way of working. Uh, it's a very similar kind of message, but to different, delivered to a different audience. And then the big one, of course, that is make sure you support them in terms of the wellness. So everyone is yep. going to have, be, be, I suppose everyone has places change in a different way. Uh, and so make sure that you support those. If we can help, that's great. Um, yeah, we'd love to sort of be able to sort of support folks with uh, with that sort of stuff as well. Absolutely. And like I said, please reach out if you require any technology to get your teams uh, working efficiently and, and being able to do their jobs to the best of their ability. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I can't speak here. Look, thank you both very much for that and for presenting today. So, and thanks to Flex Careers and LogMeIn for helping to organize this. Look, that is going to wrap up the webinar here. We'll give you all a little bit of your day back. So, if you've got any questions or feedback that comes to mind later, events at connectingup.org is the email to send that through to. Uh, we will be obviously monitoring the inbox. So, yep, just let us know. Otherwise, don't forget the recording and the slide deck will be available later. So, just keep an eye out for that, guys. Otherwise, yeah, everyone stay safe, stay well, enjoy your afternoon, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.